I remember that I tried replacing a sky once in DaVinci Resolve, but it was a pain in the ass, because first I had to find stock footage of the perfect sky, then select the original sky, then replace that sky with a new sky, and then make that new sky move because the camera was moving. So yeah, it was a pain in the ass. But now, look at this. This looks great, right? Well, it's fake. This is the original. Boring white sky. And this, I did that in less than 5 minutes. Well, actually, I didn't do it myself, because DaVinci Resolve can now auto-generate a brand new sky out of thin air. Pun intended. Okay, so let me show you how the new sky replacement tool works in DaVinci Resolve. Now, the first thing you should know is that it's not magic. It's not perfect. Don't expect it to create an incredible sunset sky with all these amazing colors. It won't happen. If you want an amazing sky, then wait for an amazing sky. But, you know, sometimes you just have to work with what Mother Nature gives you. A boring all-white sky or an all-blue sky. And that's when the sky replacement tool might come in handy, because it's still pretty crazy what it can do. Something like this, for example, or something like this, and even a bit crazier, like this. So you can add some nice texture to a boring sky real fast. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so this is my clip boring white sky, go to the color page, yeah, you heard that right, you don't even have to mess around in the fusion page, the color page is where it all happens. And first of all, I want it to look like it was shot at blue hour, so let's adjust the white balance. Make it look nice and blue, something like this looks okay, and then add another node. And in this node, we're gonna create a mask of the sky, so that the sky replacement tool knows what's sky and what's not. There are a few different options, I'm gonna go for the 3D qualifier. So go to the qualifier tab here, select 3D, and then here select the one with the plus symbol, so that every click will add to the selection. Okay, something like this looks good I think. But we can still refine this later on, so yeah, this looks good. Then go to the effects library and find the sky replacement tool and drop it here, so that it will create an effects node. See, it's a node that has more of these little triangles. And all we need to do now is let the sky replacement tool know what's sky and what's not. Super easy, just connect blue with blue here. And like I said guys, it's not magic, so it won't work that well with all footage. If your sky reflects in water or in windows, or if parts of the foreground are the same color and brightness as the sky, then it's gonna be more difficult and you're probably gonna have to combine the automatic features with manual masking and things like that. So if it's the first time that you try this, find some footage that has a nice contrast between the sky and the foreground. Okay? Okay. And let's create a sky now. So these are all the settings. First section is where you can refine the mask, refine the edges, adjust the white and black levels until you have a perfect mask. But it's usually easier to refine that mask when you can actually see the new sky. So let's do that first. Let's go to the artificial sky section and set the opacity, which is zero by default, to one. And there it is, the new sky. It looks horrible, of course, because it doesn't match our blue hour look. Let's fix that first. The sky color, something like this. And then the horizon color, a little bit yellowy maybe. Something like that, yeah. And then of course clouds. Again, opacity set it to 1, and then there they are. And now it's just a matter of tweaking the settings and the colors until you get the sky and clouds to match your, your footage. I want something dark blue here because it's blue hour. And you can mess with the detail, contrast, shape, you can even add a hotspot, but we don't need that right now. And once you've created the sky that you like, always go back to refine the mask. And then, of course, because the image is moving, the sky also has to move accordingly. You can keyframe it yourself, you can track the foreground, track the original sky, or use the effects tracker. If it's a static shot with a bit of camera shake or a bit of panning, then just use the automatic track foreground option. And this is actually the most difficult part, and it all depends on what your footage looks like, how it moves. I still have to learn myself which option is best for which type of footage. It's not that easy. Maybe I'll make another video on that once I, you know, get to know those settings a little bit more. But yeah, that's it. A short introduction of the new sky replacement tool. It's really cool. I mean, DaVinci Resolve, guys, it's, 
Seriously, I don't even know why you would use any of the other programs. Premiere Pro, they should call it Premiere Poop because that's what it is. And Final Cut Pro, they call it like that because at some point you're gonna make the final cuts in Final Cut before you switch to DaVinci Resolve. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, I love DaVinci Resolve, it's great and they keep improving it, it's crazy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.